Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Uh, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, obviously yesterday, they released that Tron pre-release is coming out, and the Tron is actually going to come up. So we're going to take a look at the pre-release campaign info for part one. That's going to be today's video, so let's go right into it, but we'll probably talk about some other Tron stuff if we go in. So the big thing that's happening here is obviously Constantine's banner, but I'll save that for the end. I say as I don't right here, but here you go. So let's go over the actual event uh, details for the pre-release campaign, if you somehow do not know and just want to hear me tell you about it. Uh, there'll be a Leyland Stone usage period, which means from May 1st to June 30th. A login bonus, you get three of these little stones that will help you get through the story. Um, and you can also, for a limited time, uh, shop exchange to get more of them. These are actually pretty good if you are tired of all the fights in the story and would rather the story fight just end. <laughs> it's very useful for Lost Belt 6, I'll give you that much. I used probably a decent chunk on them, uh, to get through some, uh, I think it was just, I think it was literally just one of the bosses in there. I was about to say his name, but if you haven't done it yet then you'll know when you get there <laughs> everyone reaches the giant uh, fluffy wall eventually but yeah there you go you'll be able to exchange for that there'll be limited interlude quest opens during this time which means that for a brief period of time that you'll be able to do the interludes for servants that you do not have and if you do have them regardless of anything they'll also cost one half ap so it's best to prioritize the units that you don't have so in case you never get them then you can at least pick up these same quartz and if in the future you ever do decide to do you ever end up getting them then you'll automatically just apply these upgrades to them so the units that will be unlocked will be uh bradamante um vlad the berserker sherlock holmes Siegfried, Diermut Saber, uh, Ryder Astolfo, uh, Kiyohime, and Salome, which is a weird assortment of units, but I assume that they all have something to do with the upcoming Tron. Or maybe it's just random units that they decide to put together. I'll find out soon, because I don't know what happens in Tron. <laughs> Limited time campaigns that are going to be going on. 1 4th AP for all Arc 1 main quest, Fuyuki to Solomon. And 1 4th AP for Arc 2 main quest, which is Anastasia to Hein Kyo. Uh, if you are looking to do the Epic of Remnants, that doesn't count. If you're also wondering why, like, hey, I completed some stuff in Epic of Remnants and I didn't unlock the thing to do Arc 1 on Arc 2, that's because they don't count. They're considered Arc 1.5, which is neither Arc 1 or Arc 2. So now you know. 1 half AP, uh, 1 half AP for Avalon Le Fay main quest, and 1 half AP for all free quests. The 1 half AP for all free quests will only applies to the first three times a free quest is cleared. From the fourth time onward, the AP cost will be normal. So you need to get cleared Avalon Le Fay to unlock this ability. So there you go. That'll be the limited time stuff there. There will also be some limited time master missions. Um, these will The mission period for them is from May 1st to June uh, 13th. And the reward claim period is from May 1st to June 20th. Um, so the missions are clear Anastasia, clear Gutter de Mirang, clear Sin, clear uh, Yuga Shirta. I am adding an extra S there by accident. Atlantis, Olympus, Hein Kyo, and Avalon Le Fay. Basically, Lost Belt 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 5, 2, uh, 6. No, this is 6. This is 5.5. .5, something like that. And this is 6. Uh, easy enough. And the rewards in it will be 10 bronze saplings, 100 mana prisms, and then 10 bronze saplings again, 100 mana prisms, 10 bronze saplings again, 100 mana prisms, 5 golden apples, and then finally for clearing Avalon's Fae, you get a sick 3 rare mana prisms and a crystallized lore. <laughs> Let's go. A trial quest will be open up for Constantine, which you can go in there and check out Constantine for yourself if you so wish. Um, you can only pick Constantine for this one. And at the start of battle, Constantine's MP gauge will be charged to 200%. They really want you to just check them out for a bit. Try before you buy, basically. And you'll get a single ticket, so no matter what, make sure to do it. It shouldn't be very hard. It should be very easy. They should be factored to completely destroy them with the unit given. And yeah, that's all the stuff that's going to be happening beforehand. And then here's the actual unit that's going to be talked about today, which is Constantine. Or Constantinos uh, the 11th. I'm just going to refer to him as Constantine um, from this point onward. <laughs> Constantine is a writer. He is one quick, two arts, two buster, four hits on that quick card, 
four hits on the arts, three on the buster, and five on the extra. His active skills are Prayer of the Hagia Sophia C-, increase on MP generation rate for one turn, 500% chance to draw attention to all enemies to self for, by 300% for one turn, gain crit stars, 50% MP rate, the star rate up is 20 and the cooldown is 6. Uh, second skill is the Fallen Empire EX, increases party's attack for three turns, increases party's buster performance for three turns, and then increase the crit damage of Roman allies for three turns. 20%, 20%, and 30% um, attack, buster, and Roman crit damage. On the cooldown is 6. Uh, the third skill is the Cessation Privilege C. Charges on MP gauge, increases zone critical damage for 3 turns, increases uh, crit stars every turn for 3 turns. Grants self on death activated buff for 3 turns. When defeated, charges the last ally's MP gauge except for self, increases last ally's critical damage except for self for 3 turns. And then grants last ally's critical star regeneration buff except for self for 3 turns. The MP increase is 30%, the crit damage is 30%, the star regen is 10, the last ally's MP is 30%, the last ally's crit damage up is 30%, the last ally's star regen is 10 stars, and the cooldown of this is 6 turns. His passive skills are Riding B+, Magic Resistance B+, Independent Action C++. His uh, third append skill is an anti-archer attack damage aptitude, and his noble phantasm is Theodosia Constant. Constantin it's funny that that first word I was able to say but not this one Constantinos by these threefold walls I swear um Buster NP uh, anti army self increases own buster performance for three turns grant self invincibility for one attack one turn reduces damage taken by Roman allies by five thousand for one turn the buster up is 30% on MP level 1, and on MP level 5, it's 50%. Increased party's defense for one turn. It's 100% defense on charge level 1, and if you get them all the way to the final charge level, it is 200%. And that is Constantine. And you can see him right here, locked in and ready to help his Roman allies. So how is Constantine? Constantine is a very uh, interesting unit in that he is 100% all about Roman allies. And that's about it. Uh, he's definitely designed to be used in challenge quest type scenarios. He does have some nice support stuff that he's got in here, so you can definitely try and use them in some other stuff. But to actually take full advantage of doing stuff like being able to draw the attention for a single turn and stuff like that and activating this on death activation bus buff, you're going to need to be in something either challenging or some kind of boss uh, fight type scenario. Um, with the ones that coming most to mind is of course Nero Fest and stuff like that. But any challenge quest should in theory do, as long as you have Roman allies. And then next, it's the Roman allies, and you can build them in probably one of two ways. You can really just try and make them be better for Roman allies. And to be fair, there are some really good Roman, um, servants on here. Um... I'm afraid of clicking the Roman because they might accidentally show spoilers for some future stuff, so I'm not going to click it. But the ones that come to mind are obviously Nero, um, Bride Nero, who is a Saber. There is uh, Quernos, who is the Lancer, who is also a 5-star. There's also Draco, who's going to be coming up later on um, for the collab next year that everyone should try their damnedest to get a single copy of because she is not going to have another banner after that. Um... And you can try and make him buff those type of allies. And then there's the other way, which is Quernos himself, which is actually a cool thing that they can do is he can make anything Roman because all path leads to Rome. Just to quickly show you which one I mean, just in case you get confused with Romulus, the uh, three star one. But I'm talking about this one. Um, you can see here in, his, uh, in their Noble Phantasm, I believe it's... Grants party the Roman trait for five turns and then inflicts Roman trait debuff on them for five turns. And you can give a bunch of Roman stacks, but the point is is that you're able to shoot this Noble Phantasm, in which case, whatever fight you're in, Constantine is going to be able to buff them. So yeah, if you're looking for that kind of gameplay, then Constantine is right there for you. It makes it very hard to talk about because the people who want Constantine already know that they want Constantine and are aware of what he does and how to actually use him. Um... 
And for everyone else that looks at him, they go, what is this kit? <laughs> it doesn't make any real logical sense. It's like, I guess I can use him with a bunch of uh, Roman allies and stuff. But then when someone who actually is real about this Constantine shit, they already know the proper way of kind of using it. And that's just me trying to come up with some ways right here off the bat to be like, yeah, I think that's how you would probably end up using Constantine in some kind of way. As a like support unit, but also in challenging kind of fights, being able to draw attention away from the enemy. Um, probably end up taking one for the team, um, especially if they're single target, granting yourself invincibility, giving them some allies in the back, a whole buttload of reduction in damage, and then also the overcharge increase their defense to make sure that they can live and stuff like that. Uh, the buster increase is also okay. I do feel a little bit weird that he only has two buster cards. The MP generation rate will be able to be used at least for that single turn because he does have at least two arts and one quick. And unfortunately, you just don't get any MP generation rate from there. So yeah, that is Constantine. I know at least a couple people are going to be excited to go for him. But if you're someone who is not already ready for Constantine, I think it's better probably to save. If you know, you already know, if you already know if you're going for Constantine, I hope, I wish you the best and I hope you get him as easily as possible. For everyone else, if you're just a looky-loo and not really about this Constantine life, it's better for you to just kind of skip and move on um, and wait for some stuff in the future. Which thankfully, there's plenty of stuff coming in the future because Trom has a lot of stuff coming in it. Um, so, oh, 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 and another thing, if you really like Constantine, this is going to be a big pain to talk about, but it has to be talked about that the only other banner currently scheduled for Constantine is this one, which is for the 8th anniversary, and it's during... It's during the 8th anniversary, and it's being featured with a bunch of other units, and he's only up for, like, f four days, I believe. One, two... Three, four. Yes, he's only up for four days. Um, so keep that in mind if you're someone who really likes Constantine or wondering like, hey, when's the next time I can actually have a chance for Constantine? Because I'm really interested in the Arc Earth stuff right now. Uh, Archetype Earth and stuff like that. Um, in Summer Abuki. Just know that next year it's going to be even harder. I think that likely this year is your best chance of getting Constantine. If you're not specifically going for GSSR or something like that. Um... It's going to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> it's already a pain in the ass to be summoning for him now, but I think next year it's going to be even worse if you're a fan of Constantine, so keep that in mind. So, what is some other stuff coming out here that I'm saying why I'm being so rep reprehensive about actually being like, yeah, go go for it. Well, the reason is that Trom is here, and for Trom... I can show here. It's a little bit funky, but they've already said... That this thing right here, the Trom chapter release, is actually happening mid-May. So that means that this banner is also being moved up likely. It's going to be happening pretty soon. Probably after I release this, they'll already have announced it. And another thing to kind of keep in mind, not to say that it might happen. I'm just going to, again, mention it happened in the, Kore the South Korean version of this game. The South Korean version of this game for Tunguska, because in um, for this Tunguska banner coming out, they did have a banner that featured both Viches, and I feel the need to at least call to attention and say, hey, if you're maybe starting the game, it might be better to just hold on for a little bit, and especially because Constantine is going to be here for, I believe, a while. I believe his uh, banner runs until... Uh, let me see if I can quickly pull up his banner. Nope. All right, one moment. Do do do. I love this site and being unable to look back. No, what have I done? Here we go. Wikis. They are a mystery. Uh, this summoning campaign lasts until 5:22, so you have a full. You have almost the entire month to think about it. So think about it. You know, take your time, settle in. Think about some stuff in Trom, you know, see some of the upcoming banners and then make your decision there if you want to continue going for them or something. It's all up to you. Um, I wonder when his banner ended in JP. Hmm, June 8th. So it was like a couple, like a week after the release of Trom. And by the way, if you want to do Trom, you're going to have to do the prologue slash epilogue. It's really weird because technically speaking, the Tunguska was an event. So you can actually do the Tunguska prologue 
And then it will, you don't do the event, it will kick you straight to the epilogue, if I remember correctly. <laughs> so you just, like, everyone, like, comes back and says, like, man, Tunguska was crazy. But don't worry, you, if you want to read about Tunguska, pretty soon, um, they're going to be releasing something that will make you be able to play it. Which is the, one of the things I listed here on a JP. Yeah. But yeah, watch out, because again, anniversary is likely around this time. So that means everything that you see here is going to be coming at you quick and fast. You really just don't have any time. We're in May now. It's May now. We have one month. You have two months to prepare for anniversary. If you're not ready now, <laughs> I would suggest start getting ready. Or maybe you already stopped caring about the anniversary and you're just like, you know what? I'm ready for next year because that's Lost Belt. Um, the Lost Belt 6 summer. And I'm ready for that. Either way, you have to prepare and do stuff like that. Uh, that's it for the video, everyone. Again, I wish you the best of luck if you're summoning for Constantine. Um, he looks cool. That's Romulus. That's not Constantine. Here he is. Locked in, unlocked in. Locked in. Now I'm here. Here we go. Uh... That's it, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. The best of luck to you in your summons. And hopefully soon I should be finally be able to find some free time from work to actually do the videos that I wanted to do. <laughs> I look forward to that. Until next time, I wish you guys the best of luck. Peace out. Bye.